Um, uh, moving uh, on to our to our uh, second uh, speaker. Um, let me just um, uh, add him. Okay. Okay, it's my pleasure, really, uh, to introduce to you today um, our second speaker, Mr. Uh, Mr. Celso de Costa, um, who started his career in management and human resources. Then he completed his dental hygiene diploma um, at the University of Lisbon uh, School of Dental Medicine, Portugal. Um, he's an international speaker and has been um, uh, and, and has been um, um, uh, by, by the Swiss and the, by the Portuguese uh, press. He's a former assistant professor at the University of Lisbon, and currently um, he, he works at EMS Switzerland as the GBT, uh, which is uh, guided biofilm therapy, yes, GBT clinical um, development manager. Okay, without uh, further ado, um, Mr. Salso, yeah. go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Thank you for having me. I think you, you all, you can hear me well and you can see my screen. So, um, yeah, today we are here to, to talk how to integrate GBT, the guided biofilm therapy, a new way for doing prophylaxis in the practice. Um, you just you, you just inverted a little bit. I hope I started. I have done my diploma as a dental hygienist in 2010, and then I specialize in management and human resources. Uh, so, 10 years ago, I, I have done my diploma as a dental hygienist. I started working as um, in a private practice in Lisbon, and as a, an assistant professor in the university for a year. Then I decided, okay, let's come to Switzerland and uh, i've been here for nine years i started as a dental hygienist in the big chain of uh, clinics and then i became the prophylaxis manager running 24 clinics uh, with now 52 uh, dental hygienists i'm still the member of the board in this uh, chain of clinics i don't uh, clinic not here here on switzerland and um, since a while i became the gbt clinical development for ems so um First things first, what is GBT? So I'm gonna try to, to explain it before knowing how to integrate in the dental practice. And um, let's look to the old recipe, like we, we, we used to say. So before we always had done scaling with the piezo ultrasonic uh, scalers and by hand, and then finish with the polish rubber workups. And uh, I was listening with the, Dr. Tim Donley, and it was really fun to to hear from his part that Polish is just, yeah, there, there's no scientific proof that you're gonna have some benef benefits for for the patient, and I completely agree. And we're gonna go go there. So why we are we need GBT if the whole recipe is working? Well, we need the uh, GBT. So we can look for a study that was uh, done um, a while ago by um, Professor Axelson and uh, uh, Dr. Lind, where they, they had 257 patients and have done a 30-year follow-ups where the, they disclose every single one of these patients each time that uh, they came to do uh, a prophylaxis and remove the biofilm meticulous with hand scalers, ultrasonic scalers, and, and the, the polish. And they saw during these 30 years of follow-up that the patients didn't have more caries and didn't have attachment loss. So it, it was working. The prophylaxis that they were doing, it was working because it was really meticulous. They were using biofilm to see where the biofilm was um, disclosed, to how to see uh, where the biofilm uh, was. And so they could remove it. Uh, and we can see in some studies, uh, like Cochrane, maybe it's the most known uh, internationally. The other two, they are more European, like uh, uh, Germany uh, center. They show that uh, the old recipe, they are leaving a lot of biofilm in the mouth of the patient. And like Dr. Team uh, Donley uh, told about it, the biofilm gonna, gonna make the inflammation. And so we need to remove it so we can have a proper mouth 
and establish a good oral health. And if you compare the old recipe with Axelson and Lint, and now the guided biofilm therapy, we can see that with Axelson and biofilm, we disclose everything. The disclosing is the solution that we, we, we can um, provide just to as a um, biofilm revelator. So we're going to show where the biofilm is. Uh, we motivated the patients every single time with the biofilms, showing the areas that they, they need to work on it. We removed the biofilm meticulous because we, we were seeing the biofilm with the discloser and the old recipe we don't do with the discloser, so we, we cannot remove 100%. What we can improve now with guided biofilm therapy is with the new technology that we have, we are less invasive, so better for the enamel and the soft tissues. And there, it's more comfortable for the, for the patient because for Axel and Lint, they spend hours and hours to do one single patient. Uh, why? Because they were you're only using hand scalers, ultrasonic uh, scalers, and the polish to remove uh, all the biofilm. The GBT is an eight step protocol where we start always with the assessment and the assessments have, like Dr. Do uh, Dolly said before, the this health questionnaire um, so to see the general health of the patient, because we are clinicians, we are pr uh, care providers. So we need to, to know about these things. Uh, where you do uh, deep pockets uh, measures, uh, and we talk with the patient to understand why they are coming. Then we disclose to see the biofilm, and you use the disclose to show the patient where are the areas uh, that they need to improve. This is step three. Uh, where we can um, personalize the advices for the, the patients. We start with the airflow. Yeah, <laughs> we inverse a little bit. Why? Because this is a less invasive technique. Uh, we can remove all the biofilm because um, the biofilm is easy to remove and even early calculus. Then we can use the periofilm for the pockets and then we're going to use the PSOPS just in the areas that we have the hard calculus. And once again, I, I, I was really seeing the, the webinar from uh, Dr. Donnelly, where they he was telling about the full mouth debridement that we can, we have to rethink this and only uh, use um, really end scalars, uh, ultrasonic scalars in the areas that we have problems with, when we have uh, calculus and be selective in the debridement, that's it. In this protocol, we are selective in the, in the debridement. Then we're gonna check revisit uh, if needed and do the recall. But we're gonna go step by step a little bit further. So the science of biofilm. Uh, we only know the tip of the iceberg, uh, and but we know that some of these uh, bacteria, they are responsible for, for caries, for gingivitis, for periodontitis, mucositis and perimplantitis. So we need to remove uh, this biofilm to prevent all this disease and um, once again, we are care providers. We are saving lives like we saw in the last webinar. Why? Because we are preventing general problems just by having a good oral health. The concept of biofilm started 40 years ago with Professor uh, Bill Costerton that was um, just trekking in the mountains in, in, in Canada. So he slept, he slipped in the, um, in the uh, rock, uh, in, in the rock, and he started to analyze in this rock, and the, he saw uh, the biofilm, the this uh, agglomerate of bacteria. So he started to study it, it, and the first description of uh, the biofilm it was in uh, 1979 by Professor Bill Costerton. And we can see that in the mouth uh, uh, there are certain areas that accumulates a lot more of uh, biofilm and calculus. Um, why? Because they are harder to to properly clean a, 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 at home. Brackets, for example, uh, in the pockets, interproximal areas, the threads of the implants, um, in the recessions where we, we have the, the roots that is exposed and the root is uh, uh, a lot more, they have a rugosity, so it's uh, easy for the biofilm to attach. So, and, and these areas, two persons wear cups, they cannot assess, access these areas. And even the hand instruments gonna scratch. We cannot use it in the implants. We, 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 we're gonna remove a lot of cement uh, on, on the recessions. We can even uh, damage the treatment with the brackets. 
O, o, the biofilm related diseases, uh, we already saw the, the bacteria, but it's always gingivitis, periodontitis, and possible uh, tooth loss in the natural uh, teeth. And in the implants, it's, this is going to be a really good problem because we are getting implants all, all the time. And I think in a couple of years, we can have a tsunami of uh, mucositis and periodontitis because um, people that already lost their, their teeth and we are putting implants without educate them by a good uh, dental hygienist how to do the home care and how to improve their um, oral health and reduce the biofilm to less than 20% of plague score. Yeah, I think we're gonna have some, some problems in this area. Um, we have caries also in the occlusal because the, the fissures, uh, they are, we cannot clean it at, at home. In the interprosimal areas uh, where we have a tough time just to educate patients and to motivate them to use uh, interdental brushes or even to floss. And the roots, because uh, yeah, um, we go. We need to go deeper. <laughs> Once again, like Doctor uh, Donley uh, told, and go remove it, remove the biofilm and the calculus uh, under the gums. It's related with a lot of systemic diseases. Uh, we have a lot of studies for Alzheimer's, for diabetes, for cardiovascular disease, heart, uh, heart attacks. Um, I, there's a, a really good study was saying that people with uh, gum disease, they, they have a higher risk of 67% plus of having uh, cardiovascular uh, disease. That, that's, that's big for me. Um, so once again, I'm, I was really attentive for, from, the, from Dr. Uh, Dogley. It was really good. Once again, we are saving lives. We are saving lives. So GBT at a glance. We already saw, uh, saw the um, the eight step protocol, but the five rules of GBT, it always make the biofilm visible, not only for the patients, so we can show the patients the areas that they need to work on, but also for us. Because sometimes, and you, I, you're gonna see some of my pictures, sometimes it's hard to see the biofilm. And if we're not seeing, we're not uh, removing it properly. Use the airflow first before the piezo use the uh, ps instrument the ps instrument is a, a thinner uh, insert for the piezo that we can use in 95 percent of the cases and you can go till 10 millimeters um, deep do not repolish at the end once again we saw in the uh, the other webinar yeah, there's no scientific proof that it's it, it gonna be beneficial for the patients. And the rubber cups, uh, it, it cannot go interproximal, it cannot go under the gam, it cannot go um, clean the brackets. And we're gonna, the five uh, rule is use less power and instruments, no over instrumentation. So we need to be the less invasive for the patients. And once again, just be selective in the debridement. GBT step-by-step, step. first one is gonna be the assessment. It's the preparation. The clinician and the patient is gonna, gonna talk. We're gonna do the anamnesis. Uh, know a little bit more from the patient, but also uh, the, the general health problems and how can we motivate them and how can we help them. We go the periodontal screening. We go uh, do, do the, the periodontal chart, for example, and we're gonna assess the risk of, of caries. So the thing is, do you use um, metal probes or, or plastic probes? Now we are seeing some studies that say, are saying that we can use the metal probes everywhere. And like that, it's gonna be the same pressure and also the, the same instrument taking all the measures. Or I agree, I agree. I think with the implants, we are not scratching the implants. We are just taking some, some measures. Then by doing the assessment, we can see what we're gonna use. If we're gonna use the airflow, the periflow, the piezo, a healthy gum, we're gonna we're gonna need the airflow and the piezo only. If calculus, gingivitis, airflow, for because it goes deep four millimeters like this, uh, we're gonna see further and the PS also. If calculus, periodontitis, airflow to go till four millimeters and then use the period flow to go deep in the pockets for till nine millimeters, and the piezo we can use till 10 millimeters. Uh, superation, if there's superation, we only use the airflow, not the perio flow and the PS. 
and then the implant is going to be almost the same thing but we're going to use always the barrier flow in every single uh, case except the superation and also the piezo we're going to use a, a different tip uh, a pi tip this uh, um it, it it's covered by plastic so it, it's going to be good for for the, the implants but also with the pi tip we're going to go to the clean the neck of the implant not in the threads there are studies that show everything they use um plastic curettes um pi that there's always plastic in the threads if you're going to use in the threads that's why it's important to use the barrier flow in, in these cases and I, I have some good cases uh ahead we're going to do this disclosure we apply we run uh with water just to remove the excess and then we're going to have this kind of image you can see uh, on, on the left yeah it's hard to see the biofilm but once you use the biofilm disclosure you can see the areas that the patient are not doing as well so we're going to see this uh, violet the disclosure is available since 1914 um but 80 percent of us already know about it and we use it at school but 10 percent of us are doing it why because in the past we saw that um, it was messy it was a liquid disclosure sometimes it's hard we think we're gonna spend uh, too much time on it uh, we're gonna think that the patient don't enjoy having this uh, coloration but honestly it's gonna be easier now we have another disclosures uh, one of them that i'm gonna show a picture here this is just a palette that you can take it with the tweezers and go around it's really easy to use then you're gonna spend less time in the mouth of the patient because you're gonna see the areas that you need to use the airflow and the piezo and the areas that they are not disclosure they are already clean so we don't need to touch them if you're gonna touch them you're just gonna be invasive so yeah this is a golden rule use the disclosure it's gonna be easy for you to work but also to educate the patient and to show the patient that it's not a myth we are talking about calculus we are talking about film biofilm but the patient don't see it but once you you show them the disclosure and the areas that they have this violet uh, ink they're gonna say okay you are right it's not a myth you are telling me the truth uh, and now i can see the areas that i need to improve Third step, motivation. We're gonna show the patient the disclosure. Like I said, we're gonna instruct and we're gonna be personalized for the patient. Uh, maybe the first patient of the day gonna need interdental brushes. Maybe the last patient of the day, just we need to improve the toothbrush technique. Um, and that's gonna be a plus. For example, this kind of patients, we can see that there's more interdental uh, uh, problems that he have with the disclosure. And we are now using three different uh, sizes of interdental brushes and showing him the areas that he, he need to improve. Uh, so for me, it's a must, it's a golden rule. It, it gonna be, you're gonna make all the difference for your patient. And this kind of patients, they're gonna understand. And then the second appointment, six months after they're gonna come and they're gonna say i want to do the violent thing again i want to see if i have more or less than the last time and i want to see the pictures and this is something that i do with all the patients we take i take the pictures with all of them so i can see how they were doing three years ago and how they are doing now and most of the times even even for me i i'm impressed with the kind of the results that i can get from from only doing this uh, minimal evasive, but also uh, be the more personalized for the patient as possible. We're going to use the airflow. Uh, now we have a different powder. We have the airflow plus with the it's an erythritol powder that we can use for 90% of the cases. Uh, we can go super uh, and sub um with this kind of powder. Uh, by using the airflow, we are getting already under the gun till four millimeters and then if we need more we're gonna go with the perio flow uh, if there's remaining stains we can use the airflow classic this is a, um, a sodium bicarbonate uh, powder honestly i don't use it anymore uh, for me the plus powder is uh, universal now and i'm using for everything and we we need to be careful because 
with the plus we can do everything and we can touch everywhere even the soft tissues you don't feel anything with the bike uh, the sodium bicarbonate uh you cannot touch this, the soft tissues uh, you cannot touch the restorations uh we need to avoid uh white spots we we need to avoid the braces because it's more abrasive so but the erythrosol uh, powder we don't feel anything and i have some pictures that's going to show you that they are really minimally invasive the airflow technology we need to use the airflow um three to five millimeters of distance to the enamel so it can be uh, more efficient and you can see in the curve here uh, that he have an accelerating curve. So if you are too close, you're not as efficient as you can be. So, but you, if you are to three to five millimeters of distance of the enamel, you're gonna be perfect. And uh, it's gonna be even easier. You have the powder that is coming in the, in leaving in the exit in the middle and you're gonna be inter, inter you have the water that's gonna guide and gonna um, heading to aim and target more the areas that you you want to use it really important also the angulation uh, don't be completely um, against the enamel you have uh, you need this um, angulation of less than 16 degrees to be the more efficient but when the powder and the water touch the enamel you're gonna bounce back removing all the stains all the biofilm um, and even early calculus and bounce directly for the high vacuum ejector if you go directly uh, against the tooth you're not efficient the powder is gonna accumulate and so you're not touching the enamel directly you are touching powder each time the airflow uh, the um, powder plus the plus powder is a the um, most important component is the erythritol and the erythritol is a natural uh, thing that you can find it in grapes for example and in in mushrooms and it naturally fights oral biofilm and it's suitable for for a diabetic if we go further uh, the erythritol is an alkalotic sugar that is not metabolized by the bacteria so you can use it in the diabetic uh, people no problem at all you can use it super gingival is minimally invasive by using with the airflow you're already uh, going under the gam till four millimeters you can use it in the exposed dented cement and on restorations uh, it's an optimal access um, for brackets for implants for the the pits and the fissures uh, to of the teeth uh, it's a maximum comfort you can use it in deciduous and primary teeth you can use it on your tongue in soft tissues there's honestly it, it's the universal powder now and i'm using all the time when we, we had made some studies we can see that is minimal abrasive uh, is a, in a correct distance and angulation and movement and by using the biofilm uh, discloser, we're gonna be more efficient. And here we have some image um, on the human enamel, but also in glass ionomer. And you can see that uh, in human enamel, um, by comparing with calcium sodium, there's no difference with the airflow uh, plus powder and no difference with the sodium bicarbonate. But if you use in restorations, you can see that the calcium sodium gonna have this the pressure because it's removing a lot of material with the plus powder you don't see anything and with the airflow classic that is going to be the sodium bicarbonate you have a little depression that's why uh, we don't advise you to use it in restorations so for restorations and white spots use always the, uh, the plus powder like you see here in this in this study you don't have any difference it's going to only remove the things that they are not supposed to be there all the rest gonna stay in place here you can see uh, the enamel of a tooth uh, in the left picture you can see it uh, uh, before cleaning so you see the uh, residual biofilm and you can see this this uh, this crystal um, formation because the enamel is a crystal so uh, you have this crystal enamel and the then the biofilm agglomerates in this in these areas 
if you use the polish uh, a rubber cup with the polish paste what you're gonna see you're gonna see in, in the middle um image that it's more abrasive but worst of all like this depression that is normal in this crystal formation they're gonna be cover of uh, polish paste so you are removing the biofilm and at the same time you are putting in place the profit paste so that's don't make any sense uh, that's not what we want we want to to be um as best clean as i don't i don't want, want to use the the word clean but um without biofilm only the two enamel and in the the right picture you can see the two enamel uh, with the crystal formation without the biofilm just by using the airflow plus powder so if you're going to compare the only one that's properly gonna gonna remove the biofilm and um be the minimal invasive uh and the more conservative uh as possible gonna be the airflow with the plus powder this is just to understand the um, the granulation of the of the powders uh, and the difference uh, before you can see the sodium bicarbonate is going to be 40 micrometers erythritol is way less it's only 14 uh, so the maximum uh, size that you're going to have for each grain going to be 14 and that's why it's, it's softer and no pain you can use it to gingival it's gentle it cleans up just by using the airflow till uh, four millimeters and it gonna make the calculus visible. So at the same time, we are removing the biofilm, we are removing the discloser. And at, at the same time, it's gonna be easy for you to see the calculus, but each time that you pass, you're gonna see it more uh, clearly and you're gonna clean till four millimeters. Uh, this is just to show you the, the difference by using um, less invasive uh, instruments. Uh, you can see a cut on the on the enamel. This is the control on the left by using glycine. There's no difference by, by using erythritol. Almost no difference. Piezo a little bit. We can, we start getting a little bit more invasive, and then with crit we remove a lot of uh, of tissue. Uh, that's why we want to avoid to to use crits everywhere why because we are doing a lot of pressure um and th they are really sharp so each time that we remove a calculus you are removing a uh, healthy tissue and we don't want to remove this healthy tissue we only want to remove the things that they are not supposed to be there uh, by doing some studies we can see that um, by using the airflow in the cementum um we're gonna keep 94 percent of the cementum if we're gonna do airflow plus piezo we're gonna keep 84 percent but if if we're gonna use hand uh, curettes uh we're gonna um, we're gonna remove a lot of tissue so we're gonna let uh, leave only 65 percent uh so we are losing uh 35 percent of tissue each time that we use a hand curret curette uh, instead of uh, 20 with the airflow plus piezo uh, PS. The fry pan is something that we, we need to take care of. So it's, this is a good analogy because uh, we don't want to scratch the, the Teflon layer. So it's going to be anti-adherent. Uh, and But if you use the knife or something more aggressive, we're going to remove this layer. And then it's going to be easier for other deposits stay uh, and um, glue or get just we're gonna lose this anti-adherence um, technology and it's almost the same thing with the enamel if we are using hand instruments you're removing tissue you're gonna have some scratch and by having some scratch it's gonna be easy for the biofilm and uh, to attach to these areas and um, just form calculus so this is uh, this, the same um, pictogram, but we can see with the airflow by using the airflow prophylaxis uh, with the plus powder, we're gonna remove the soft deposits, deposits really, really well and not being invasive and remove a little bit of our deposits by using the sodium bicarbonate, we're gonna remove the soft deposits and also a little bit of uh, the hard deposits. By using the piezo, for example, 
well, it's difficult to remove the soft deposit. That's why we are using the airflow first. But it's easy to remove the hard deposits, but already starting getting some um, a little bit invasive. And hand curettes, they don't remove soft deposits. It's hard to remove uh, hard deposits because we have a lot of movement to do it with our hands and it's really, really invasive. Five step, we're gonna we we're gonna use the perio flow. We're gonna check for the contraindications that we're gonna talk uh, in the next slide. Um, we need to have the X-rays to confirm confirm that we, we we can use it. Follow the handling indications. That is really really important to have the practical uh, training with it. And you can remove biofilm uh, from four to nine millimeters. And we're gonna use a maximum five seconds uh, per site. You're gonna remove the pocket and peri-implant biofilm. Uh, we have three holes, uh, three horizontal hair holes, and one for 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 the powder. And it, it's you have the grade, so you can see uh, if you have uh, three, five, uh, seven, or nine millimeters. And we cannot use it uh, immediately after a subgingival uh, treatment when we have profuse bleeding or suppurations, when we have pockets deeper than the mucogingival uh, junction, uh, if uh, we have recently extracted the adjacent, adjacent tooth, uh, or if we have a tooth fracture. We're gonna do uh, little movements, vertical movements, and we're gonna spend five seconds uh, per, per side. So we're gonna remove, we can one, two, three, four, five. To remove it it's really good for the implants use it all the time for the implants except if there's a uh, separation so this is how to you can see that the tip is flexible so we can um, you can move around the the root of the the teeth but also around the implants and um, it's really good to clean um, between the vocations too but like I said, it's really important to do the, the practical part with the with the barrier flow. Always do x-rays before using the, the barrier flow. And we go to the piezo. Uh, we use the PS in 95% of the cases. Then for the rest of the cases, we have the PSL and PSR. This is mostly for um, the molars uh, and also for the forcation. And we have the PI mostly for restorations and the implant neck. Once again, don't use hand curates or don't use inserts in the threads of the implants. For that, you have the airflow and the perioflow. Uh, okay, you're gonna use it around the neck of the implant. So the PS is up to 10 millimeters, PSL, uh, PSL and PSR uh, up to eight millimeters and the PI four millimeters. If we are using the exposant dentin, Briefly, uh, use the powder plus afterwards, okay? Because we have this um, this benefit with the RVT troll powder. So we can use it subgingival. We can use it around the brackets. Uh, avoid touching the brackets. We have the PI to do for the primary teeth, uh, but we can use also the the PS. I always use the PI for with kids. Why? Because it's less noisy and it's more gentle. So for the kids with five, six years old, they, they appreciate it. Uh, we can use the PI in restorations around the implant neck. Once again, attention, don't go beyond the, the threads. You have the PSR and PSL to go to the molars, mostly the forcations. And then you, you have also the tip uh, to super gingival no pain uh, at all uh, the you have to be careful because it's only the tip gonna be activated okay this is not like a cavitron that you have uh, the the tip that is activated for, for everywhere this is to be the most efficient but also the minimal invisible invasive um as possible and also for this comfort of the patient. So it's gonna be a no pain treatment for the patient. We're gonna do the final check. If we see that this is remaining biofilm or calculus, we can revisit with the airflow or with the piezo. We're gonna be now able to do the diagnose of caries because 
we have a clean and dry surface, so it's going to be easier and you can protect with the uh, fluoride. Here you have a perfect example why to do the um, diagnosis of caries at the end of the appointment and not in the beginning. You have the left image with a lot of stains and the right image that now you can see there's some ca caries in the interproximal uh, areas. Then we're gonna do the recall. We're gonna ask the patient if they like the treatment. We're gonna revisit all the, the advices that we have done in the motivation step, the third step, and schedule the next recall. And the patients don't feel any pain. So they, they're gonna uh, agree with the recall. And honestly, 85% of my patients are already leaving the, the office with a, a second appointment. Here we have a, a little video that uh, compare a little bit the traditional way and the airflow. Um, we are just putting the discloser on first. You can see it's really easy to use the disclose. We're gonna run to remove the excess of uh, the um, biofilm discloser. In the traditional way, we can start with the ultrasounds or with the hard curettes, but you can see that it's really hard to remove the, the soft um, biofilm. And with the airflow, it's quite easy. Really important, you can see the IVACMAN injector that is uh, correctly used to avoid the spread of the aerosols and also to control the water jet. And you can see that we have done half of the mouse uh, lost faster than the, the other one. The other one, they are using hand instru instruments. So for the biofilm, it is not the appropriate way to, to do it. And we don't kind of have the same results. You can see the, the area that we have used the airflow. It's, it's clean. It's clean. And now if, we can see, if you see any hard calculus, you can use the piezo. So it's going to be more comfortable and the... Like Dr. Donnelly said before, we, we need to do a selective debridement. And that is something that it, it, it wasn't able to do it with the uh, traditional ways. So once again, the five rules of GBT make biofilm uh, visible every single way, uh, single time. Use the airflow first to remove also the, bio, the biofilm and soft, um, soft uh, bacteria. And then we can use the PS instruments for, for the areas that you need to use something to remove the cal the hard calvus. Not replenish, don't use rubber cups, don't use profit paste, you don't need it. And we are using less power uh, and hand instruments. GBT out outcomes is no more carries. You saw with the study of Axelson and Lindt that for 30 years, this patient didn't have any more carries and they didn't have any loss of attachments. So it's, we're going to provide a really good periodontal health too. Uh, we're going to reduce the bleeding on problem, the gingival index improvement, uh, clinical attachment level gain. And I have a really good case today I'm going to show you. Uh, it's minimal invasive, so we are preserving the, the tissue, uh, the hard tissue, enamel and cementum, but also the, the soft tissue, uh, implants, restoration, orthodontic appliance too. And the patient experience is really good. It's really good. They don't feel any any pain so it's easier for them to fix another recall how to integrate gbt in the practice it's hard to explain to the patients how we are changing why we are changing the the method why we are changing the technique and uh, explain the advantage of, of gbt but also to change the mentality in, in the practice that that's the most important thing because we are working with the other colleagues and maybe we went we want to interact with the orthodontist so we need to explain him why we are changing and what benefits they're gonna they're gonna have for them for their patients so we need to change this mindset that uh, we need always to to use um and instruments all over the place that's not not a real a reality anymore. We have new technology, and we can avoid using the the hand instruments. For that, training is going to be essential. Uh, not only the tech, the um, theoretical training that we are doing today, but the practical training too. Uh, how to properly use the high vacuum injector? Uh, how to do the angulation with the airflow? Um, how to interact with the PS in, in the piezo? So this is all uh, important uh, things to do, um, and it's going to be always, always um, beneficial for you. For you, 
And now we have this aerosol um, topic all, all over the place. So that's why the practical part is going to be important to know how to position the, um, the iVacuum ejector. We are using the PureVac uh, that I saw in the presentation of uh, Dr. Donnelly too, because we have the mirror, so it's going to be easier and we can work two hand. But to control, uh, we just need mouse rings, Obtrugate, uh, so why? Because it's a cheek retractor, so it's gonna be easy for you to to move around. But it also works as a barrier for the aerosols. Um, use of the um, iVacuum injector and the correct technique. The correct technique is gonna be always important. And don't forget the saliva injector too at the back. The studies are showing uh, a little bit all over the place that the iVacuum injector uh, when correctly used, it can reduce 96% of all bacteria uh, aerosols. And uh, yesterday, we it was this study um, made by Dr. Dixie and Dr. Donne uh, that showed that um, by using the right techniques, uh, by using Optrogate as a cheek retractor, the appropriate mouse runs and the high vacuum uh, section, we can see that we don't have more bacteria in the air that the control room so but if you're not using you're gonna have a little bit more so you have the link here um it was in the really important journal dental journal in germany and it's, it's really interesting they have done 20 patients 10 uh, as a control uh, subject um where they use um, obtrogate mouse runs uh, and correct technique with the high vacuum injector and other 10 that they didn't use the high vacuum injector, and they and they measure also the the hair, the bacteria in the hair of the room as control, and they compare uh, all these three things, and we can see that if we use the correct technique with the high vacuum injector, and um, we can have the same thing that if if we have in the same room where I am standing now. So yeah, so practical training is going to be important. The patient communication is important too. Uh, the, techno, uh, the technological uh, revolution uh, is going to be minimal invasive, more comfortable, and more efficient. Let's look for the toothbrush. Uh, we started uh, a long, long time ago with some um, chewing stick to clean our, uh, our teeth, and now we have smart toothbrush. They are connected with our smartphone, and they can tell us which areas we need to improve or which areas we didn't spend uh, uh, as much time as uh, we need. So, and also in the car, you know, we had uh, uh, a stone wheel, then we go for a wooden wheel, and now we have rubber wheels. And these rubber wheels is so generic because they are always evolving with this run flat now. So technology is, is advancing. So the technology, the, they need to advance uh, to evolve too. And, um, we need to stop doing prophylaxis as what we were doing 30 years ago. We are we have new materials. We are, we have new knowledge. Now we know that the dental hygiene is not it's not only the cleaning lady, but we are really care providers, and we are here to provide our patients a good oral health. And through the good oral health, they can have a good general health. So we are saving lives once again. This concept with GBT, we are changing the traditional hygiene visit. It was uh, always oral hygiene instruction, a small part of it, meet and greet, and greet a small part of it. And then uh, like 75% uh, um, of the, um, the consultation, it was only the breathment. Now with GBT, uh, we are changing it almost 50-50. Uh, it's 47% of uh, the consultation. It's a real consultation one where you access, where you talk with the patient, where we educate the patient, and where we explain the, the problems that they have. And then we're going to be on the debridement, and the debridement is going to be minimal invasive because we are using airflow to remove the biofilm. Then you need to use less uh, um, power instruments and just focalizing in some areas that you need that you have art calculus. And this is going to be helpful for the patient engagement. We have four steps that is more talking with the patients. Uh, that's why I'm saying it's more almost 50% uh, of the, the appointment going to be really engaging with the patient because it's a real co hygiene consultation. And 
this is changing the conceptivity experience of the patient. We have kids that they are coming and they are competing and asking me to do the violet thing, violet thing again to see if they improve it or not. This is one of my patients. You can see the, the calculus on the lower jaw, but in the upper jaw, it was hard to see in the incisives, the biofilm. Once we disclose it, we can see that even in the upper jaw, we have a lot of uh, areas that they need to improve. And in the end of the appointment, uh, by using airflow and uh, PS, we have this result. It was great. The kid saw the, the results and now he's coming every six months just to, it's kind of a competition for him now <laughs> to see if he's improving or not. In the orthodontics, it's way easier to use the airflow and to clean, um, to do prophylaxis around the brackets. One minute, yeah. Mr. Serpa. One minute. Okay. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to try. If you can give me three, I'm going to try it to finish. We have this periodontal uh, patients also that we, we have uh, get really good results. So the patient is part of the treatment. And we are in this uh, experience economic where the people are trying to look for experience and not only for treatments. We have standard protocols with the, with the teams. So we can use the pediatric dentistry. We can use with the orthodontics. We can use them. Um, in the periodontal disease and even with implants. And we are using this with the orthodontic treatment before getting the braces, getting a GBT done, uh, during the braces, doing the motivation, and then they are coming every three months. And uh, in the end uh, of the treatment, in the same day, we do 30 minutes GBT, removing the braces and 30 minutes with GBT after. Uh, so it's this patient experience that we want. This is the patient that we have saw uh, about, about the parental disease. And six months after, we have this, this kind of uh, result. So you are seeing the gums, they are perfect. This was another case. She was my patient for five years. And uh, the only way to change their habits, it was by the disclosure. This is six months after. You can see it's not perfect, but it's a really good result and a, a big difference. This is my last slide that I had this patient that came for the dentist and this is a, okay, we have mobility type three, uh, a lot of uh, bone loss, calculus that you can see in the interdental uh, area. We, we need to remove this, um, this teeth. The patient didn't want it. So he came for me, we have done GBT all the way, uh, airflow, perioflow, PS, and six months after we have gained a lot of bone. We don't see the, the, the calculus anymore. You can see the bone is really good. And now this tooth that they said, okay, we need to remove it. We're gonna redo the end of treatment. We're gonna put a new crown and it's coming every three months. So it's beneficial for the patient, but also for your practice. So I think you feel good. Thank you very much. I was spilling a little bit in, at the end, but I think uh, we it was um, good. Uh, you can follow me in the Instagram. I have a lot of pictures of my, my patients. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'm all, all ears. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Celso, for, uh, for taking this opportunity and sharing uh, this information uh, with us. Yeah, um, it's a pleasure. I would, yeah, I would like also to mention that I myself uh, a big supporter of the GPT uh, concept. In fact, um, I've called it as a game changer in the oral It's a game changer. Maintenance. Yeah. And and in the few uh, next years, it will be named as a golden standard in implant maintenance. And you will. It see. is. Yeah. It is. So it's thank really you very good. much. Um, okay, we have three minutes for questions. So if there if there is any questions, you you might uh, uh, raise your hand and you could speak up. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's wait for two minutes and see if we have any questions or any hands raising. Okay, I'm seeing that uh, people are uh, asking for the reference. I can send you the reference. No, no problem. I, I send it to you, Ayub, and then yes. you can share maybe with the with the rest. So, but um, thank you again for the opportunity. It was great. It's always good to share experience with the colleagues. Um, now in the distance, of course, but um, it's always good. And thank you for the organization. It was really good idea doing this first international online conference. Um, and I think this sharing about uh, 
multi-cultures but multi ways of seeing uh, prophylaxis and the entire gene it's always beneficial for everyone Thank you very much. Um, you, you're really in a good uh, place right now, a good time. So yeah. you're lucky. Um, thank you very much, um, Mr. De Costa. And um, thank you. This, you're welcome. And this is your uh, certificate of appreciation. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And with that, we come to the end of the first session um, in our uh, second day of the SDHS uh, First International Online Conference. And now I would like to give the microphone to Mrs. Futun Khalifa, who will be the moderator for the next session. Thank you all for listening.